מוטי סנדק, שלום. שלום, שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you for inviting me, it's a great pleasure. Our honor. מוטי, an Israeli theater man, who is responsible for two highly important initiatives. The first one about 10 years ago, with all about Jewish theater, mm-hmm. and one of its recent spiritual children or child is the Holocaust Theater Online Collection Project mm-hmm. uh, that you have uh, started in Vanza, of all places, mm-hmm. uh, last uh, January, followed up by uh, an event in Yad Vashem uh, this March. And this is the time to tell our viewers that Israel will commemorate uh, the Holocaust uh, this coming Wednesday. So what can be more suitable than having this discussion with you? Moti, how did it all start? Yeah. Uh, if you mention Vanze, then I mean, the project didn't start at Vanze. At Vanze was the actual the, the, the global launch ceremony and, and, and uh, conference, international conference. Uh, and we chose Vanze actually about two years ago. And this is the play the, the, the time when, when we actually started to, to, to develop this, this idea of the Holocaust Online Theatre Collection with support that we got from uh, the Claims Conference. Um, when I started this, this, this idea of the Holocaust Online Theatre Collection, which is one of ten collections that will be in the, in the, in the whole <coughs> uh, online mm, Jewish museum, Jewish theatre museum, which will include altogether ten collections. Uh, I thought this is really a very heavy stuff, and it's 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 you know it's like a black, deep, endless ocean of knowledge, of information, and of something which is can be very depressing spiritually just you know to touch it and you have to be very careful so first of all i thought i have to build some sort of standing point or a hook to hold myself and the stuff for it so i looked around and i thought what will be the, the hook and then I suddenly realized that within two years, which was two years ago, there is 70 years of the Vanze Conference. And I thought, would it be an amazing idea to go to the Vanze Conference and to see if it would be possible to have this date, the exact date and time, and see if we can have the launch ceremony there and then start to work towards this date. And you have managed to do this. And we managed to do that. It was an amazing uh, uh, a coincidence, or not coincidence, because at this moment, the very moment I picked up the phone to Wanze, to Wanze, I didn't wrote a mail, I just picked up the phone and I asked to speak to the director, Mr. Norbert Kampe, Dr. Norbert Kampe. And I told him this story, and he said, listen, it looks to me great. Why won't you write an official mail. So I wrote an official mail an hour later and it didn't take more than half an hour and I got back from him an official letter inviting us to do the conference and the, the press conference and the long ceremony on the very same day, 70 years after. Which at 11 o'clock a.m., which, which is one hour before the conference was happening there. Which is not only historic, it is very, very touching. Great, exactly, which was actually a match, a magic match between the place, the date, and the project. Everything fall into place. The same, exactly. At the exact time. Exactly. And 
Then we did this project, and this is the launch ceremony invitation with the Vanza House on it. And when I picked up the brochure of the Vanza House, when I was there, the first time we came just for a visit, about a half a year ago, to, to, to prepare everything, uh, I saw suddenly that on the ground plan of the, of the building, you know, this place, there were, the rooms are numbered. And there are three numbers, room one, eight, and nine. I mean, the actual room where the conference took place, is, its number is nine. Mm -hmm. the, the room before is eight, the entrance, and the, the foyer, the lounge, is one. Suddenly I looked at it and I, I called Dr. Kemp and I said, well, look, he said, what is it? And I said, listen, I think it's a magic thing. He said, why? And I said, listen, if you take one, eight and nine, you put it together, it's 18. 18 is one, eight in Hebrew is Chai. Chai, the light. So he's, he suddenly was stunned, you know, and he's, he, he was chilling, you know, and we said there, the two of us, and, and we had tears in our eyes. Basically, Moti, we are talking about a very important work, uh, which is becoming even more important now that uh, the last Holocaust survivors are unfortunately leaving this world. And when you think about the current generations and the young generations, it's all about uh, rescuing from oblivion plays written by Jews during the Holocaust and salvaging dramas produced during the Holocaust in ghettos, even in concentration camps. Right. This is uh, probably one of the most important missions that anyone can do when it comes to the Holocaust. Exactly. I mean, what, what we did, we're trying also to look on the, on the issue of the Holocaust from a different angle not from the angle of the terrible thing that happened, of death, of the bodies, uh, of the pain, of the black side. We're trying to look of the bright side. I mean, it's, it's an amazing phenomenon, I think, which happened only with the truth, because there were, there were and there are still, unfortunately, other genocides around the world, if you know you know, starting with the Turks and the Armenians and now in Africa or even in Syria. I mean, it's in no other situation, as far as I know, people during the genocide started to do culture, sing, dance, do opera, concerts. No, only with the Jews, only during World the, the, the second so not only the Holocaust is unique, when it comes to the total darkness, yes. which is the Holocaust, yes. there were bright lights yes. created yes. by the victims. Right, and the victims tried and, and succeeded, some of them, to keep alive with using the arts, the culture, as a mean to survive. Of survival. To survive. Exactly. Yeah, and if not, not physically, <coughs> spiritually. Spiritually. Exactly. Now all their, all their plays and everything, s s scenarios, uh, music, it's all here. We have it. And it's performed all over the world now. All right? Mati, will you be now, kind? Sorry. Just, uh, if, I, if I may just finish. Now what we said, okay, then uh, as you mentioned, in, uh, soon the survivors will not be with us which they are telling the story actually to the young generation. <coughs> so we are asking who is going to tell the story? How are we going to tell the story? And we thought theater, the performing arts, is a powerful vehicle to tell the story to the young generation. And as soon as we started to, to work on this theme, to tell the story through theater, to put it in Wanze, and to say at the same day, at the same room, 
you can't destroy human spirit and creativity. And that was our message there. And now, from, from here, we, we started the, to, to move on, you know. And this is also a way that very easy uh, uh, we got also the approval of UNESCO. And we have the letter of, of uh, Irena Bukova, the general director of UNESCO, which approved us on this project, which is not easy. And also other, and, other, and also many other international organizations. Many other international organizations jumped on it. Which recognized the importance. Recognized the importance. So the amazing magical linkage between the message of uh, life, spiritual uh, life, culture, and education. You know? And then we looked around and we, we really we came to the idea by looking around first and searching and seeing there are so many establishments, organizations, museums uh, dealing with Holocaust around the world and in Israel. And we try to have a sort of a checklist to see what has been done so far relating the Holocaust. Okay? So there are some points that are found. One is the collection and preserving the memory of the Holocaust. Okay. That's the work of museums, archives, libraries, and private collections, or, or collecting the names, like Yad Vashem is doing important work and other yes. and other museums all over the world. The second point is research and publication, which is done in different places, books, articles, uh, uh, on the internet, but it's all spread all over, over, all over the place. The third, the third is transferring the message to the next generation, which, as we said before, this is the project that, 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 that the survivors did so far. And the Spielberg project. The archive. The archive, okay? Which is stories of survivors, not art. Just some of it is art, but mostly it's just the stories. Schindler's List is a form Schindler's of art. Schindler's List is a form, a form of, of putting art. it into art. Right. Now, the fourth point is the work, that, the amazing work that started with Wiesenthal, okay? Trying to catch those that you can catch and put them into trial. Uh, the Nazi war. And then, and then out of that came the Eichmann trial, right. as an example and so on. But a part of Eichmann and some other small groups, you know, there was no great... The majority got away. The majority got away. Okay. The, some of them still live, the, the nice pensioners living in different places in Germany and so on. Now, another point that was done till now, which is amazing, interesting, is the, 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 the point of the, the writers, which is done by Yad Vashem, of course, you know, all those hundreds of writers, and some of them have got also records in, in, uh, in plays and films, the stories, you know. Then there is, of course, the story that Raphael Lemkin put on the record of the word genocide, which was in 1943. And a part of it, or, or, or out of that came out the whole, uh, the whole uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights in the 10th of December 1948 of the United Nations, mm -hmm. right? And there is a play about it. Lemkin as well. Mm -hmm. And then I would say the last, the last uh, thing that was done to preserve the Holocaust is, is the, the, the declaration from 2005 that every day on the 27th of January, many countries, most of the countries yeah. and the United Nations yeah. are doing a, a memorial commemoration. Day. This is the International Holocaust Day. International Holocaust Day. Holocaust day. Yes. So, as you see, there is a list of really amazing achievements that were done so far from in the last, during the last 70 years. But you found that something very important was missing. Exactly. Exactly. That's the place where we are coming in. We say, okay, let's turn the, and see the bright side of it, turn and see how we can use... And you have chosen theater. And performing arts. And performing theater, arts. music, dance, operas. 
and, and other arts too, which are related to theater. I mean, if there is a film done based on a, a play, or the making of of a play, or there is a, an artist, a painter, a great painter that made, that made sketches for a scenery in the ghetto, then he will be also his, his big CV and his life. And, his and all this is being very carefully and very professionally collected right. to be uh, presented on the web. Online, exactly. So everybody will have access. Exactly. Moti, will you be kind enough to give us, yes. to share with our viewers, yes. a few examples that are very close to your heart? Sure. Uh, uh, we started, I mean, because our editorial board, academic editorial board, which have now 24 members from Israel and abroad, headed by Professor Gad Kinar, who is the head of the theater department at Tel Aviv University. University. And he is also the president of ITI, which is the International Theatre Institute. And through the Theatre Institute, we got also approval of ITI. They, had, they joined our project last September in their annual conference that was held in China. Very important, because this is the ultimate recognition in the importance of this project. Exactly. More than 120... You will listen carefully. More than 120 representatives of countries from all over the world, from all over the world, approved that this is a project that the ITI would like to deal with it in the next years. But there was only one, an Indian guy, who said there was no Holocaust. But then, you know, he got he got some knowledge during this conference, and at the end, he sat down and and they all accepted it. So it was unanimous. Unanimous. So it's very important. And By the so way, forgive me for interrupting. Yeah. This is uh, probably one of the most important examples yes. to underline how significant is the educational part of this project. Exactly. This Indian guy that you have mentioned. Exactly. He, he came an ignorant and he left the conference a change, some a change, a change person. Changed his mind and got some knowledge, and 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 I mean, I mean, it's it's an amazing tool. Theater is a big tool. Music is a, is an amazing tool. Opera is an amazing. Tool. Can you give a few examples? Yeah. So uh, we we started uh, according this um, academic uh, board. They spread the whole thing into five slices of time zones, okay? What was before the Holocaust in Europe, I mean, uh, the Weimar thing with the great culture in Europe, in Berlin, the Jewish artists who were on all stages and so on. Then you move on to the second zone, which is during the Holocaust, what happened in the camps, in the ghettos and so on, till 45. The third zone is, is what happened in Palestine and in the United States during the war, before or during the war, which is, you know, when artists... Palestine under the British mandate. Right. Run away either to, to, to Israel, and some of them were established with a harmonic orchestra or some... Or some Bronislav Huberman. Yeah, or some groups, you know, right. or groups. Or these are, the, peop the, people these are the people who managed to escape the Holocaust. These are managed to escape. And the others are those who escaped to the States. I mean, if you to mention one of the biggest one is Kurt Weill, right. the composer, you know, who worked with Brecht. And then in the States he made many films. And, but the other thing that he made, and this is one of our topics, which is an amazing topic, he worked on the project which is called The Flag is Born. You know, it's a, it's a project which was led by one of the great uh, inspiring people, Hillel Cook, who was who was then in the States in 1940, he was there. Mm -hmm. He was uh, one of the Lehi uh, people. Right, the underground, the Jewish underground, left, fighting went, the Brits. Right, but he, he went to the States to collect money. But then he changed his mind and he became very leftist. Uh, yeah. And he, there, started to to put on ads in the newspapers in America 
and he wanted to go and to knock on the door of the President of the United States and to ask to tell everybody, listen, people are burned, Jews are burned in the camps now. Right. I, we are talking about 1941, 42. Right, during the Holocaust. Nobody wanted to listen to that. To him. Yeah. So what he did, he, 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 he in, initiated a production, a production we want to live, first production, that was put on Broadway. And he put on all the American biggest stars uh, to, to, to play in it. And Kurt Weill wrote the music. Mm. And Ben Hecht, the amazing screenwriter, you know, one of the biggest screenwriters right. of Hollywood, who right. was also a Jew, he wrote the script. And this is one of the stories we have in our collection. This is mm -hmm. one example, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was A Flag is Born, which was done towards 1946. Five or six, I think, and this was put on in order to collect money to bring all the refugees from Europe to help bring the refugees and settle them in Palestine, which became the state of Israel. Right. And this, and another nice story that in this production, one of the stars or, or the, the main role played a young student, acting student, by the name of Marlon Brando. And he then said that he doesn't, he don't want to get the money because he was in the union and he had to be paid. So all his money that he earned, he gave back to this, uh, which is an amazing story. And this is one example. And we all remember Paul Newman in Exodus. Of course. Another film. Of course. This is after that. So we, we, one of the topics we, we put on is, is tourism, the whole cultural life in tourism, as a pilot. This is what we started with. And we put it on. It, this was also the, the main topic on the conference in Yad Vashem that we had uh, last month, together with the International Institute of uh, Holocaust Research at Yad Vashem, headed by Dr. Bella Guterman. And, uh, and then we have all the other topics, you know, like Korchak, like uh, the, the character of Eichmann on stage, or uh, uh, George Tabori, Anna Frank, of course. Yes. And now we are stepping into our, one of the big projects is we're going to do a, the whole topic of what happened in Holland during the Holocaust, mm -hmm. which is from Anna Frank to Westenburg, you know, the cabarets in Westenburg and so on. Right. And we are doing it. The idea is that we are collaborating on each project with different organizations in Israel and abroad, organizations and, and sponsors to each project. And one of the projects is, the, the, that one is going to be collaborated with, the, there is a center, a unique center of uh, research, research center of, of Dutch Jewry at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. We're collaborating with them on this project and we've got a fund for it, special fund for a Dutch foundation, which is uh, uh, called Maror Foundation, from the J Dutch Jury. And so this is one of the examples how we are building brick by brick, step by step, the whole project. What can we wish, Moti Sandak, when you look ahead? Uh, I would like to see very soon that uh, all the 27 topics that we planned will be online, which means... It's a big work. Yes, yes. We have big staff. We have I mean, all members that are delivering their content to us, which means... Uh, it's done mostly by an international uh, staff? Yes, it's in an international editorial board. Wow. As I said, headed by Akina. Uh, just to mention a few names in Israel, uh, on top of that Kinar is uh, Yeshua Sobol, who is a very known playwright. For his uh, play, The Ghetto. The Ghetto and other two plays. And other plays, right. About the Holocaust, but he wrote another 50 or 40 plays, you know. Right. Uh, Nava Semel, who is also a great uh, writer. Just published a book. Just published a book related to the Holocaust. Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Michal Govrin, uh, Kobi Luria, who did some research, 
some years back on the tourism cabaret. Mm -hmm. And he did a CD also. Right. Uh, and, and some other people from Israel. And then we have another uh, 15 people from around the world, leading people on, on, this, on this stuff. As from Professor Stephen Katz, who is the director of the Eli Wiesel Center in Boston. To mention a few, or Professor Rebecca Witt from the United States, um, or uh, Professor Robert Skult from the United States, who is uh, really one of the most amazing. Uh, just recently, there was a book published that he's mentioned there as one of the 50 uh, most influential people mm -hmm. of the 21st century relating to Holocaust. Mati, I would like uh, to thank you very much for taking uh, the time thank to share much. with us uh, all this uh, wonderful uh, information about a topic that is so is as painful as important. And uh, all I can say is uh, good luck in continuing this important work. I, I can call it a mission. Mm -hmm. because it is indeed a mission and uh, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much and I invite all the spectators of this video to, to go into our website, website which is all about Jewish theatre at the moment and if you go google it all about Jewish theatre it will appear just and Culture Buzz uh, seconds this invitation of yours. Thank Toda you Roba. very much. Toda Toda Roba. Roba.